Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Word of the Day podcast. My name is Jamie Silva, and it has been too long since I've been back here behind the mic, pleasantly explaining another useful word to you all. Today's vocabulary feature will actually be fairly short, so as to make room for a long special feature that we're quite excited about. But first, the word we'll be talking about today is the noun repartee which I would say means a spirited and clever exchange, usually verbal and usually between two people. Google defines repartee as, quote, conversation or speech characterized by quick, witty comments or replies, unquote. This is pretty close to my definition, I think, and pretty close to the definition of banter, which is another cool word, and is defined as, quote, the playful and friendly exchange of teasing remarks, unquote. Now, repartee comes from the French repartee, which was originally a fencing term, meaning an answering blow or thrust. So like if one swordsman makes a move trying to jab the other, but that guy parries the attack and returns with a thrust of his own, that's repartee. And I think this fencing image works well for repartee because as a style of conversation, like fencing, it takes some skill, it can be a little competitive, And depending on the direction the repartee goes, the verbal jabs can sting a little bit if one is rather sensitive or not toughened to the game and the good humor of it. To see what repartee looks like, you can turn to pretty much any fictional book, movie, or TV show, all of which are basically guaranteed to contain many passages of repartee between various characters. That's one of the coolest parts about fictional conversations both their creation and their consumption, how everyone seems to have just the right thing to say ready to go at the drop of a hat, so that no sooner does one person unleash a witty remark than their buddy builds on it with a clever rejoinder. Compare this to a real-life conversation where, for most people, most of the time, pulling off even one or two such remarks would be a major triumph, and trading a whole string of them with someone is practically unthinkable, unless you're both improv experts or something. I suspect this is one reason why people so enjoy seeing idealized, ultra-witty conversations in fiction, just like they enjoy seeing idealized, almost-too-good-to-be-true physical appearances, life circumstances, or storylines. So where can you use this word? I'd say any time you see, or better yet, take part in, a lively, fun conversation, the kind with lots of backs and forth, wry chuckles, and perhaps some gentle ribbing and timely references to relevant memes and catchphrases. That's where repartee may be happening, and you can refer to it as such. Another way to remember repartee-friendly settings is that witty repartee is an essential part of any dinner partee, if I may. Okay, now on to the examples of how to use repartee in ordinary conversation or writing. Example number one. Quick-moving conversations usually made Edgar nervous and unsure of what to say, but he managed to hold up his end of things by laughing or rolling his eyes at the right times, and occasionally contributing an all-purpose interjection like, that's what I'm saying, or, ah, you got that right. As long as no one scrutinized it too closely, this passed for reasonably smart repartee. Example number two. When Timmy accused Tommy of stealing his Legos, Tommy replied, Nuh-uh, I didn't, to which Timmy retorted, Yeah, huh, you did. Nuh-uh, said Tommy. Yeah, huh, said Timmy. This rather repetitive repartee continued for the better part of a minute before their mother ordered them both outside. Note that here I'm using repartee sarcastically, as this exchange is not clever or verbally adept at all. Example number three comes from Anne of the Island by Lucy Maud Montgomery, quote, Gilbert came occasionally on Friday evenings. He seemed always in good spirits and held his own in the jests and repartee that flew about. And finally, example number four is from The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. Quote, Then, planting a chair by Lady Loborough's side, he stationed himself in it and began to talk to her with a mixture of absurdity and impudence that seemed rather to amuse than to offend her. Though she affected to resent his insolence, and to keep him at bay with sallies of smart and spirited repartee. 
Okay, folks, that is it for the examples, but that is not it for today's show. I mentioned improv a couple minutes ago, and that's exactly what this next feature is all about. I'm including it in this episode because improv just runs on repartee. It's sort of the whole premise of the activity. And if you don't know what improv is, don't worry, all will be explained shortly. I recorded what follows separately, so the audio will be a bit different, uh, and I'll step in at the very end for a couple last remarks. Here we go. Up next, we have something for you that really doesn't fit into any of our recurring segments, nor could I think of a plausible new segment to build around it. It's sort of its, its own thing. And it starts by me welcoming to the program two talented voice actors, Jack and Kirsten. Jack and Kirsten, welcome. How's it going? Hello. Good. Good. Wonderful. So I've asked you here today because you are well-versed in, I think it's fair to say, improv. For folks who don't know, give like the basic nickel version. What is improv? Why do people enjoy it? Well, a lot of the time improv is a comedy thing. Uh, people will come and they will watch people play these games or do these scenes that they have never done before, characters that they may have never played before, and it's all made up on the spot and they're just given kind of prompts from the audience or from their cast members. And improv actually doesn't always have to be funny, but mm -hmm. generally it is. Yeah. It's just that's it's more enjoyable. Normally <laughs> it's funny. That's like, like whose line is it anyway? That was a very popular show. Mm -hmm. Still it's still on, but that's where a lot of people see improv on TV at least it's always that's funny. Yeah. Certainly, right. Well, not TV, but YouTube. Yes. But those those are all short form games, so you don't see too much long form improv. Long form is uh, generally there's a you're given like a setting, mm -hmm. and then you you build a whole story yeah. with your group of people. It's like a short play. Yeah, essentially, it's like a short play improv. that you make on the spot, and that's yeah. that's a you know a little bit more. I don't know, advanced improv, I guess. We've seen long form that's like... An hour long. An hour and a half, hour and We've and seen half, some yeah. that are like maybe 20 minutes. Like yeah. it, it can so range. It can range, yeah. If you want to do long form improv, you have to be a good listener. And you have to respond to what's said to you. You can't have these pre-planned jokes in your head because it well, that, just doesn't that's work. That's an interesting thing. When people come in to audition for an improv troupe, they're not looking for your funniest bit or character. Like, that's part of it. But one of the most important things people are looking for is, can you listen? Mm -hmm. What they want to see is, if you're placed in a scene with somebody and they give you something, can you react to it right. and create something yeah. with somebody? I think that's a good segue into like the foundational improv game of Yes And. Mm -hmm. So do you want to take us through both again, like the, the rules of it and, and why this makes sense as a starting point for developing your improv ability or just listening ability yeah so yes and is pretty much someone says something they start the game and then the next person has to say yes and and then they build off of that thing in a logical way the thing with yes and you don't want it to just be like oh i went to the doctor today and you're like yes and you're my mother like mm -hmm. that's not funny yeah awesome so that's a basic one but i was hoping you two could also play a play out one of those shorter form ones mm -hmm. that is a little bit more advanced beyond the foundational one. So you brought one. Uh, yes, what is it called? And how is it called? It's called the ABC game. And how it works is that two players, that's what you call people doing improv, we call each other players, they do a scene together, and every line that is said has to be the next letter in the alphabet. So for example, if we're starting on the letter C, so I would start a line, can you, X, Y, Z, whatever. I started with the letter C. Then Kirsten would have to start her line with... Do you really think we should do that? Right, with a D. And then it goes on. We have to cycle through the entire alphabet until we get back to C. And then that's the end of the scene. So, Jamie, you want to give us a relationship? A relationship meaning just two people who are, like, out in society. Yes, not, like some sort of... not like siblings or yes. whatever, but just any kind of relationship. Good. Between two people. And I also would give you a, a letter to begin on. Yes, yes. correct. Okay, uh, this will be two employees at a petting zoo. Let's start with Z. Zebras? At the petting zoo? I mean, I don't know. It's It could work. A part of nature? I, I don't know. They're all kind of... I mean... It... Big. They're all... Yeah, you know. How do we get them into the pen? Can we get them into the pen? Ooh. Do we even bother to put them in a pen? Every zebra I've seen has just been running out in the pastures or whatever, wherever they live, Sahara, I don't, I don't know. For sure, yeah. I, I think we just let them loose and what happens, happens, you know? Golly. Yeah, yeah, I think that might be the move here. 
I, I just, I don't want to get, like, trampled by them. You've seen, like, those stampedes, you know? Harry, yeah, it's, a, it's a not a good situation. And the kids come in. Imagine telling parents, well, your, your kid had a good time, but he got trampled by a zebra. I can't imagine having to break that news to a parent. You know, yeah, let's just keep him out on the grass. Just the grass? Or should we put him, like, inside by where the food is? You know what I mean? They could kind of, like... And kangaroos. No, no, that's where the kangaroos are. Oh. We can't put the zebras and the kangaroos together, I guess. Lions. Hear me out. We have the zebras, right? They're running around. But why are they running around? They have no motivation. If we have lions... Motivation. Motivation. You're right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the lions are going to chase the zebras and the zebras will get into the pen. But how do we train the lions to chase the zebras into the pen and not just chase and eat them? Never, uh, never let them chase anything else. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um... So we don't expose the lions to anything but zebras. But that does that mean that we have to raise the lions from cubhood to to only think that zebras exist? Because then, like, what if they try to chase the kangaroos? Like, to do that, I think would probably be, probably the best course of action, right? Like, just buy some like cubs and then just train them to chase only zebras. Yeah, I think that would work. Understandable. Yeah. I think that's the best course of action. Let's do it. Let's get these cubs, and they only think there are zebras, and they chase the zebras, and that's how it's going to work. Very good. Well, now that we've solved that problem, I think we should learn to ride some of these zebras. <laughs> X-ray me after I fall off and break all my ribs, am I right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very good. I noticed, so one thing you seem to be doing is starting... If you're on a tough letter, or even like a medium letter, you'll start mid-sentence mm-hmm. with like an adjective and then go back to the beginning of the sentence and put the adjective in context. Yes. Yeah, I do that. No, that's a, that's a thing. It, it's it's cheating a little bit for sure, but it, it's so much better than just like being like and not saying Yeah, anything. no, it is. I, it's a great tactic. It's just <laughs> I'm excited to recognize it as a tactic. It oh, it's absolutely yeah. a tactic. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. You have a good sense of... <laughs> The narrative. Like, it wasn't just you went through the alphabet. You went through it in a coherent and tidy way. It's part well, of the game. Yeah, it's yeah. part of the game. Yeah, and sure. and something, too, that I'm, I am I know I'm very conscious of, and I, I can feel you being conscious of it as well, is just not trying to have conflict for conflict's sake. Like, mm. there was conflict in that, but we made sure to bring it to a resolution of some sort. Like, right. I, I never wanted to seek out the conflict. But you want to bring in a little bit and then rein it in. The reason that that I've asked Jack and Houston here uh, on the show today is to bring to life something that at the time, I don't know, I don't think I was aware of improv. It might have been when I was, I had listened to, or I had seen some whose lines is it anyway, but didn't really have a, a firm grasp of it, certainly. And this was when I was in high school, so Gmail chat was all the rage. And a friend and I would do what retrospectively was this form of improv over chat. Um, we called it a, a dysfunctional chat special. And in each one of these, um, we just assume characters. It was stable characters over the different like conversations or episodes, so to speak. And the storylines were just developed. But in each one, we just begin, you know, messaging back and forth and see where it went, uh, you know, remaining in the persona that we had adopted um, the whole time. And it went some, you know, in my opinion, uh, very creative, very entertaining places. And uh, I wanted to bring you folks a slice of that. Edited, of course, uh, for brevity, because they, they would go pretty long uh, sometimes. And I thought, because uh, their their emotive abilities and their acting acumen is far beyond mine, thanks to their, well, it wasn't just improv, it was you know, theater experience, musical theater, normal theater, all the theater. All the theater. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> of course. Um, I asked them to play uh, the my friend and I during this exchange and bring a couple of these dysfunctional chat specials to life. You guys ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. Take it away. So, what's up? We haven't talked in a while. Every time I log on, you log off. It's almost like, never, never mind. I don't like your tone, you know? I was hoping you wouldn't. You weren't meant to like it. I've put up with so much these last few days, mainly from you. Oh, of course. You're the problem. Am I? Am I, Jack? And you know what? I bet you're the one who poisoned my fish tank. Because after Friday's party, you were acting all weird and my fish just withered away. Oh, Friday's party. You dare bring that up again. Look, I don't want to talk about that party any more than you do. Then why'd you bring it up? But after you tased one of the guests, you know, word got around. Okay, I have a... 
slight issue with clowns. You know that. Th th so why'd you even invite one? Ha! Exactly! You knew? Why do you think I ordered a clown, huh? I knew you'd fall for that. Wait, you what? You heard me. This is a brand new low for you. I can't believe this. Oh, you've made low your own brand already. It's practically patented. I've had enough of your threats, you know? <laughs> At least mine aren't empty. <laughs> I told you that you were going to pay for what you did to my dog. Your dog was a nuisance. You're a nuisance. You don't see me turning you into the pound when your family's out of town, do you? Honestly, how do you sleep at night? With pills, how else? You need help. And I'm not talking about a therapist. Your face needs help. Oh. What now? You know I can't help what the fire did to my face. I lost my family in that fire. Oh. Why didn't you tell me? I... I just... It never came up. You know what? I'm sorry about that. I'll make it up to you. I'll buy you a mail-order iguana. How about that? How thoughtful. I hear they're really the most loving of reptiles. I'm sorry, too. For everything. No, don't be. Well, I have to get off to my creative sheep-shearing class. <laughs> I'm glad we had this talk, though. Me too, and yeah, go for it. Uh, you know how I love your fleece designs. Oh, you. <laughs> All right. Talk to you later. Okay, bye. Okay, so that would have been one conversation, and uh, my friend and I would have picked that up. Just a few days later, continuing the same characters as follows. Dobri vecher, yak se mas. Excuse me? Namate rozumite mi. Um, you know what? I know a bit of Croatian, and I don't like what you said. That was downright hurtful. But, uh, Kirsten, we need to talk. There are some things I need to get off my chest. I mean, mainly this octopus tattoo, but, but still. Well, go ahead then, let it all out. I just wanted to let you know that I'm not seeing Teresa anymore. At first, I thought we had something. Especially after that day at the county fair, I rescued her rabbit from a ditch, and it won honorable mention, and I complimented her pickled beets, and those did not win they anything. They don't sound exactly like prize winners. Ugh. But it, it was all going so well, until that dreadful day when Teresa sent me more beets. It was awful. And then she came over and saw them in the trash, and so now it's over. But I'm okay. I, I'm totally over it. Oh my... I'm terribly sorry. I'll love you forever, Teresa! Uh-oh. Uh, wrong chat box. <laughs> I knew it. Well, I was almost over it. Oh well. At least I'm in a relationship at all. You know, you've really been having some hard times with that, I hear. What, with the loneliness and the evenings alone with microwaved pot pie and American Idol? Not that lonely. It's not that no one likes you. I mean, people like you, but you know how it looks. It, it looks bad. Well, what about Marv? He liked you, you know. Marv? Liked me? I had no idea. Sure did. In fact, I'd check outside your window right now. I bet he's out there with a ukulele too scared to sing. Oh, poor guy. I'll have to give him a call and explain myself. But, say, didn't I see you with Dave at the petting zoo last Thursday? You were petting the baby goats. Together. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, what you didn't know is that Marv was like ten yards away dressed as a llama. What? Yeah. I wondered why that llama kept spitting on me. That was Marv. After you left, he was saying some pretty mean things about you to the other llamas. <sighs> now I won't be able to go back to the petting zoo with Dave. All those llamas must hate me. I had no idea I had such an effect on him. Oh, and remember when the, the huge penguin stole your purse? That was Marv. He is good with disguises. How dare he? Yeah, I don't think I feel bad about this situation at all anymore. I mean, the heartbreak I understand, but how he's dealing with it is out of control. That sounds a little heartless for someone that once gave CPR to a squirrel. Well, that squirrel wasn't smack-talking me to the other squirrels. Well, speaking of squirrels, don't think we haven't noticed your new fur gloves. I would never. Well, the tail muff is a dead giveaway. The tail muff was a gift from Marv. You accepted a gift from Marv? Don't make assumptions so quickly, Jack. It was just a gift. Um, I don't know how to tell you this, but throw it away now. Once he gave me a coffee table book, and inside was a wasp's nest. <gasps> once he gave me a candle, and it was scented with burnt toast. Oh, how terrible. Uh, once he gave me a refrigerator magnet, and it was so strong it turned off all my appliances. I wonder what's with this Look, thing. I don't want to scare you. Oh but... my gosh. What? It's alive. No. Kill it. It's... Ah! Kirsten! And then finally, after one more intermission. Kirsten? Oh my goodness, it's been so long. What happened to you? Oh, hey Jack. Sorry if it's taking me a long time to type. It's tough with only one hand. <laughs> I lost it the last time we were chatting, if you remember. Turns out that creature was extremely vicious. <laughs> I only got it under control by hitting it with my Webster's 1828 dictionary, knocking it unconscious. I'm so sorry. 
And, and I just want to let you know that I called 911 immediately. Although it was hard to hold the phone and make my sandwich at the same time, apparently that confused the emergency dispatch people a bit. The sandwich confused them or the fact that someone you were chatting with online got attacked by a furry animal? The sandwich. Apparently they thought it was involved somehow, maybe because I always like to ask people's opinion on whether to use salt, pepper, and honey mustard. So the topic's got a little intertwined. The subway downtown is still angry that pest control inspected all their stuff. Oh, so that's why the medics asked me where the killer ham had gone. And it went on in a similarly dramatic, topsy-turvy way for hundreds of more lines of chat. Thank you both uh, so much for uh, bringing that so vividly to life. <laughs> And just for being on generally. It's been oh, a real pleasure. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thanks for course. having us. It was so fun. And there you have it. Improv, ladies and gentlemen. Both the impromptu verbal kind and the much less commonly seen reenactment of text-based repartee kind. I hope you enjoyed both. Big thanks once again to Jack and Kirsten for lending their improv knowledge and skills to the program. On behalf of all of us here at the show, then, this is Jamie Silva, your host, saying so long. We wish you an excellent day with lots of repartee. And as always, please do have a great day.